Welcome along guys to another KTM review. This time I'm back on the Super Duke GT. It's a bike I borrowed in 2016 on the original Super Duke GT for 2017, 2018. KTM have done a bit of an overhaul on this bike. It's got the new front light on it. We'll go through all the details in a minute, but this is my review of the new KTM 1290 GT. What a bike. That's, that's not a giveaway. It, it, oh, let's get on it. Right, so first of all, sitting on this bike, it was two years ago since I rode the original, so quite a long time ago. I actually went to uh, went to France, I said Spain then, but I actually went to France on the original GT and had a fantastic trip. I've got a whole series on that trip, so I'll put a card up in case you want to watch it. I ended up taking the bike on track around Folembray Circuit in France, funny enough, which I shouldn't have done. I was a bit naughty. <laughs> I wasn't really allowed to do that, I had no permission from KTM, but uh, it was fantastic and the bike absolutely surprised me how good it was on track and it was for that reason, from that trip and borrowing that bike is why I actually bought my Super Duke, my 2015 Super Duke. So I love a Super Duke, I've had my own, I love the old GT, so when I stepped on this new version straight away I felt at home. And the bike just felt so much smaller and more compact than the old version. It's all been restyled as part of that new headlight going on it. But just the bike beneath you, it doesn't seem big. It, it doesn't feel like you're riding a big GT bike. It just felt very much like my own old Super Duke, but with all of those niggles ironed out. It's got the go. <laughs> It's definitely got the go, this bike. The thing I love about this, I mean, people asked me when I reviewed the H2SX, you know, last month, you know, well, how's it compared to the Super Duke GT? It's a very different bike to this bike. I'll go into some of the differences and I'll let you know which one I'll buy out of the two. But this is, uh, this is an animal, this. I know this is the, the softened version. The Super Duke car is meant to be the beast. This is, very much still a beast. Whoa! Whoa! Brakes are fantastic. M50 calipers, much better than my old Super Duke brakes. I don't know, I think they've actually got Brembo discs now. They, they didn't have Brembo discs before, which I think used to let the braking down. Now the brakes seem much, much better. Much more power there. So a few specs about this bike. I mean, most people know, I mean, this bike's been out a few years now. 175 brake horsepower, 1300cc V-twin, an absolute monster of an engine, absolute animal of an engine, a beast of an engine, some, might, some would say. But it's incredible, 140 newton meters of torque. You can ride this thing around all day without even putting any strain on it whatsoever. There's so much torque for overtaking. It is incredible. The GT version also has the electronic suspension, which has been updated for this year. And it feels so sporty. You've got three different modes, obviously. You've got a sport mode, which is what I've got it in. You've got a comfort mode, and you've just got a road mode, I believe. So I've been running it mostly in the sport mode. Whereas on the H2SX, you lost that feel for the road. It's completely different on this. You can feel the road on this, especially in sport mode. You get that feedback still, and you haven't lost that connection. So I, I think the electronic suspension on this is actually much better than what it was on the H2SX. The comfort mode, switching between comfort and sport, is a slight difference. You can't feel masses of difference. I think on the old GT, when you went to comfort mode, it softened up a bit more and it felt a lot more comfortable. This in comfort is still a little bit sporty. It is like being reunited with an old friend riding this. My old Super Duke, my 2015 model, I mean, I've got a whole video on why I got rid of that bike, but it was the little things which started to annoy me with it. It's in town manners, you know, the, the, the hesitation on and off the throttle, the vibes, 
from the bike if you took it below sort of 4,000 revs it would be very vibey all of those things are fixed on this one of the issues I had with my old Super Duke is the, the engine was really unusable below 3,000 revs it became really chuggy really vibey on this third gear 2,000 revs okay it's not in its peak torque area but it doesn't shake your teeth out this bike is a bit heavier than its R brother that is one of the sacrifices you make for the additional fuel tank and the bigger styling and the electronic suspension this comes in at 209 kgs dry so by the time you've got fuel and oils on it in it you're probably looking at sort of 225 230 I mean that is still light compared to a GS though but it's it, and it's light compared to the H2SX which is about 260 so and I think you can really notice that that lightness you know it is much more agile than the SX was the SX was like a like an executive express really if you want to do miles it will just get you there this is much more of a an angry <laughs> an angry thing a beast the power's amazing nothing has watered down on this from the arm model from what i can see you've got full fat power full fat madness it sounds incredible even with a stand exhaust on it that v-twin thumb it's just gorgeous ergonomics it's really comfortable you sat you're sat in a sporty it feels a bit like the gs actually the, 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 the lower half positioning where the foot pegs are feels very gs like perhaps a little bit lower down obviously than the gs but a, that sort of sporty feel bars are nice and high bars are nice and wide plenty of leverage there and you do have to get a bit of counter steering on this if you've got a really tight section of load you want to push it around but that's fine you expect to have to do that an incredible six and a half inch TFT everything on it fully loaded I mean it has, has literally got everything this bike absolutely everything even as an optional heated seat heated grips as standard what we do i will pull over and we'll go through some of the options with the dash but you've got the ktm my ride on this which i think is an extra <laughs> I'm, I'm so unsure now ktm told me it was an extra for the 790 review but everyone says you had a 790 that it's included on it so i really don't know whether it is now but the ktm my ride you basically buy the app which is about 10 pounds and then you can have your full navigation all through your screen which is great i've actually bought the app and tried it out so it'll tell you turn by turn where you need to go it'll even you know speak to you for your headset if you've got a headset telling you which way to go which way to turn someone calls you it'll flash up with their picture on the screen who's ringing you so that that integration feature is amazing love that another thing which i absolutely love with this bike is this one has got the track pack so things like the track pack which is an extra which used to only be on the super Duke car that's included now on the gt so i basically run this in track mode all of the time because <laughs> that gives me the option to turn off anti-wheelie but leave the traction control on which is great amazing something my old super Duke could never do and always bugged me so i basically run this bike with no anti-wheelie all the time keep things exciting and then you've got the option to have them how much traction you want so up and down on the buttons adjust your slip one being the least amount of traction control nine being the most so i let run it about five so you've got the track pack on here on the gt you've got a track pack so you can take this on track and have fun on it with all of those extras which are on the super Duke car but i think that's brilliant that and another great thing about these settings you turn the bike on and off on the ignition which is keyless by the way and it remembers the setting so it remembers anti-wheelie off and it will run again next time you use it with the anti-wheelie off with no lights or yellow lights to tell you anything's turned off as i say this bike is designed for a hooligan no anti-wheelie needed so i think you get my point the bike is a hooligan it's as much as a hooligan as it's sibling the full r model 
but what this has is that extra practicality on top of that hooliganism you've got optional luggage to attach to the rear two big panniers you can bolt onto the rear of this boy factory fitted luggage you've got an adjustable screen so you've got full-on proper weather protection with this wide tank and adjustable screen you can sit 100 miles an hour on this in comfort on the motorway no problem whatsoever so this really is a mile muncher an absolute mile muncher you've got heated grips standard all accessible through the menu system so there's none of, there's not a separate button there's not an ugly control box you have to, to press to turn it on it's all integrated with the menu illuminated switch gear which is great you've got the cruise control you've got these hand guards on the gt model which i really like to protect your fingers from the cold as well as the heated grips the mirrors are great comfortable riding position quick shifter and a blipper as well it handles beautifully gives you loads of confidence to throw it into the vents you can ride it like a sports bike on the front brake or you can use the rear brake ride it like a supermoto and almost pack it in you can also have the dongle to turn off the rear ABS so you can have it in supermoto mode which is fantastic <laughs> it's a hooligan it is a sensible hooligan if there was ever such a thing as a sensible hooligan <laughs> it's this bike 23 litre tank so you can have some serious miles on this because it's pretty good on petrol but I'm getting an average riding it like a hooligan I'm still getting 40 miles per gallon on this which is much improved compared to my old Super Duke car I don't think I would buy the Super Duke car I really don't I'm actually buying the Super Duke car in a month or so just to just to reaffirm what my thinking is but I think this is so much this has got almost everything the Super Duke car has I don't think it doesn't quite have is the looks the Super Duke car looks tasty looks lovely the looks on this we we'll do the walk around in a minute but they're not it's not as good looking as the Super Duke car you know having that practicality having those cornering lights this has got cornering lights by the way having that larger fuel tank you know having that screen and those are all things which is very hard to make look beautiful so you know it doesn't look as mean as the Super Duke car this bike that's the only thing which has stopped me buying this over the GT the R over the GT and of course the price <laughs> this is 16 and a half thousand so it is a couple of grand more expensive than the Super Duke car give it the gas goddamn fast oh <laughs> it's incredible it is incredible as soon as i got on this bike i knew straight away i loved it there's some i mean i ride a lot of bikes and this is right up there as one of my favorite ever bikes when i got on this i actually thought oh i could have bought one of these instead of a h2 <laughs> that's how good it was I actually thought oh you know if you just had one bike one bike to do everything on this is it not only is this an animal and can be ridden at crazy speeds you can also ride this lazy because of that 140 newton meters of torque and that big 1300 cc motor overtaking is just just effortless the power you've got the sort of 3000 revs onwards the torque you've got is incredible so you can literally just be so lazy with this it just caters for your every mood and your every desire <laughs> i'm not just i mean i i'm completely bigging this bike up but it really is that good effortless let's stop in the pub for a pint and do the walk round <laughs> only joking so there it is the super duke gt as i say you know i should think in these colors it looks nice it doesn't look as nice as a super duke car i mean that like as i say that big tank and that screen you know, it's hard to get something which looks sexy which is touring but 
I think they've done a reasonably decent job on this. I do think the front light looks a little bit out of place. I mean, they are nice, these new LED lights with the KTMs where you've got the lovely, um, you know, daylight running lights around the outside. You've got the cornering lights on this as well here. But it, I'm not quite sure about the front, about that front light. I think from the front, the bike looks a little bit odd. <laughs> I think every other angle, it looks nice. But from the, directly from the front, it looks a little bit odd, have to be honest. Every other angle, yeah, it looks good. Especially in these colours. I really like these colours on this. Hello, we've got someone pulling in now. I think, what's this trap doing with the camera? The Brembo M50s, much improved over the old, uh, the old brake setup on my old Super Duke. Yeah, I was correct. The actual discs are Brembo's now. I think that's the improvement that I'm feeling over my old Super Duke. It didn't have Brembo discs. They do now, makes a big difference. The braking feels much nicer. Um, 23 litre tank, as you can see, it's quite wide. It's a wide old bike. What I do find, being six foot two, I actually catch my knees under this lip a little bit here. I think if you're any taller than six foot two, you need to try, try your fit on one of these because you may not fit on. My knees do catch a little bit on that extended tank. So something to be aware of if you're taller than six two. My knee just catches here, a little bit under here like that, just a tad. This is where the panniers connect to, so you've got full provisions for panniers. Um, I believe you even have a, a charger under the seat for your phone, a USB charger under the seat. There's also a USB charge port here, beneath the dashboard here, so you've got two USB chargers on this bike. I'm not sure about having keyless fuel tank, it always worries me a little bit that if this malfunctions you can't even put fuel in your bike. <laughs> but it's annoying to sorry there you go it's annoying to have to get your key out to actually put fuel in if the bike is keyless isn't it all sorts of settings okay it's a bit like this the, the, the 790 you can choose which what you want to show on your main screen you know your daylight your cut blah 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 there's just so much on here heated seats heated pillion seats they're not fitted on this that's an option but it's there i mean if you want that sort of stuff it's all there the track pack as i mentioned anti-wheelie mode you can have it on or off so you, you can have wheelie control off separated from the traction control which is brilliant launch control oh launch controls on i'm, I'm not going to test that there the layout you can choose a track layout as well it's a slightly different layout to the display in track mode i may try that or there's an option there to leave the track if you leave the track, you can't split your anti-wheelie and your traction control. That's the only problem. So track mode is great. I mean, look at that. It's got a massive rev counter now when you're in track mode. So this bike is really set to do anything. What other touring bikes do you know of that have a track mode? <laughs> only on, only KTM, only KTM. Downside with this bike, is it the perfect bike? There must be something wrong with it. You've got to be telling, asking me. Well, the only things I can really think of is the fact that it's tight here. If you're over six foot, there's not a lot of room here. And the same here. So it may not fit you if you're quite tall. So that is obviously a big drawback with this. And I could, you know, I, I can just about put up with that. I can just about work around that. But any taller, and it'd be, it'd be a no-no. Other things which are... I don't know if there's anything else I don't like about the bike. The clutch feel is much improved compared to my old Super 2. That's another bugbear. The clutch didn't never felt like it was engaging very well. All sorted. Ah, what else don't I like? I guess if I'm going to be really critical, the screen all the way up isn't that high. That's the screen right up. It's not massively high. But if that's a big, if you do it, if I was doing a big trip, I'd get a little adjustable screen thing that goes on top, and that would sort it. The beauty of a screen which only comes up to there, for me, because I'm tall, is I don't get the air directed at my helmet then. I can sit comfortably at speed. My helmet is in quite a lot of wind, but it's in clean air. It's not getting turbulence off of the screen. So, for me, that size screen is actually better than the screen up here. So that's not really a drawback for me. Um, whoa, what else is... What could I... What's bad? What is bad with this bike? Apart from the slightly suspect looks from the front and a bit of tightness here for my knees, <laughs> I can't think of anything else. This thing is just so versatile and I think that's its winning card. 
they're calling it a GT, they're calling it a, a, a Grand Tourer, but it's not really, it's not just a Grand Tourer. This can do, I could say 99% of the things that the Super Duke car can do. It's just a little bit heavier. So it just misses out a little bit on the agility because it's a little bit heavier. For me, as I said at the beginning, if I had to have one bike and one bike only, out of all the bikes out there at the moment, it would be the Super Duke GT. This is power level one, which is full power. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, right. Never mind, get beat up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> oh shit.